Hello YouTube's Krosama, and here we have today is going to be a review on the Master Grade Hyakushiki Crash. Now this is a P Bandai kit, and the origin of the kit stems from the GBWC kind of like competition within the Build Divers line. Um, overall, I think this is a fantastic looking mobile suit. Uh, it's just a shame that it did come out as a P Bandai, Vice just being a normal release because I know this kit would have sold extremely well, and I think there's enough new parts on here to actually warrant a regular release but hey it's bandai's choosing so can't really do much about it but otherwise let's go ahead and jump right into the review and don't forget you can pick up this kit and many other p bandai kits over at newtypehq.com and use that promo code krosama so that way you can get 10 percent off your purchases so on to the review so the first thing I definitely want to talk about with this kit is going to be the colors. It is a drastic change than what the original Hakushiki is, being a gold mobile suit, whereas this is a flat black and grayish mobile suit. So definitely two different worlds going on here. Now one thing I can tell you is that this kit is going to have lots and lots of extra plastic pieces basically stemming from the Hyakushiki Kai as well as the Hyakushiki 2.0. It's pretty safe to assume that with all those extra black pieces left over, you can probably have made a all black Hyakushiki 2.0 if you really want it, but I don't think you could have made the Kai. Now this kit will come with water slide decals and I haven't put them on just yet because I really want to do some detail work onto this kit first and then start applying all the water slides. Now one thing to note is that this mobile suit is actually piloted by a Whammon. Uh, by the name of Marquis. So I tried looking up some images. I cannot find any images of the female. Now, I do know this isn't in an anime, nor is it in a manga. It's kind of more of like a side story that I think it's only been in like magazine clip outs. And that's really about it. So I can't find any kind of evidence of like, you know, what she looks like or, you know, what she does. Uh, you just basically get the story that is within the actual model kit in the manual itself. So we're taking a look at the head sculpt. Overall, most of it's going to be the same as the regular Hakushiki. Uh, the only big difference is uh, going to be this little antenna right here in the back. That is actually going to be different. But for the most part, everything else is going to be carried over from the Hakushiki. So moving down to the body is where things go a little bit different uh, in terms of the aesthetics. So this torso is actually going to be super different than the regular hakushiki uh, but this is actually not going to have any kind of articulation which we will cover in the articulation section but it looks really good all these like little rivets right here i mean i personally absolutely love it and that kind of like you know kind of mm, metal silver like a gunmetal look uh that, that just really adds a good aesthetic to the overall kit so we'll take a look at the arms. I mean, the details on here are going to be really good. You're going to have lots of panel lining. And I, I don't know, I just really like the fact that they put a little more emphasis on to like putting different parts on this kit. Uh, Vice and just carrying over a bunch of things from the actual uh, Hyakushiki. So you are going to have just brand new parts riddled all over this arm. The only thing I can really see that is going to be carried over is going to be the hands. But for the most part, these like forearms and the biceps, uh, I think the joints are actually going to be the same, but everything else is going to be brand new armor. And the waist for the most part is all going to be the same except for the side skirts. These are extended a little bit more, so these are definitely going to be brand new. Next you're going to have is some beautiful long legs. I, I just absolutely love how they extend the legs a little bit more to include the torso. Uh, but the legs in particular I think just look fantastic. The length of the feet themselves are, are really good. But you're gonna have to watch out because some of these parts on the side, they're just not tabbed in that, that securely. So whenever you do tab it in, I mean, just keep your eye on that. If not, then just gluing it right in is going to do wonders. But I wouldn't be putting some work into it, so I, I just did not glue it. Now when it comes to nubs, you are gonna have some residual nub residue right there. So I tried to clean it up as best as I could with some sandpaper, uh, but it's still left that just kind of little marking right there. Uh, if you want, you could just probably paint over that with uh, something as close to this as possible. Maybe uh, kind of like a light gunmetal paint, and that should actually do the trick. So maybe just a light coat, and then just kind of buff it in, and you should be fine. But for the most part, a lot of things on here is going to be undergated, so you shouldn't have any visible nubs for the most part. 
Now with the backpack, this is going to be beautiful. Look how long these wing binders are. They are gorgeous. I absolutely just love these so much. And I will probably express a lot more of my love whenever I get into the articulation. Uh, but these little like thrusters, to me, these don't make any sense. I'm kind of wondering why they're kind of pointed this way. Uh, it would make more sense if they were pointed the other way, but you, you really can't do that. So I'm not too sure exactly what the method behind uh, old girl's mind was when she kind of created this mobile suit and put the thrusters right here. Maybe it's because, I don't know, she could probably point it like that and go forward, or if she kind of angles it like this, she can you know hit the ground a little bit faster. But I know the mobile suit itself is designed for mobility because you, she wanted to get to uh, sniping spots as quick as possible and start utilizing her weapon for long range battles. But these just, I don't get what, I don't get the reasoning for the thrusters angled this way. Now for articulation, head is on a ball joint. Lower part of the neck is also gonna be on a hinge so you can go back and forth. Shoulders can move forward quite a bit. They can also go up pretty far. This piece can also move back and forth. A little bit of back and forth. Full rotation. Rotation at the bicep. Now you do have two points of articulation, one right here, one inside here. But, so, it's gonna go about that far, and then the point right inside this arm, it's only going to be able to reach up about that much. So, kinda sucks, and you really can't get any extra bend. Ball joints at wrists. Thumb is on a ball joint. Figures have two points of articulation, one at the bend where the knuckle is, and all the way down. But, these three right here are going to be together. Now for the waist, there's not gonna be any bend whatsoever. This is all just going to be one solid block with no posability. So that really sucks, uh, but it can rotate back and forth. Front skirts can move up about that much. Side skirts are on a ball joint, so they can move quite a bit. Back skirts can move out just a little bit. Hips have a good little mechanism in here to where they can just reach in and out. It's also gonna be on a peg, so it can move forward and backwards can also rotate out pretty damn far. Rotation at the hip, and you're gonna have some amazing posability with this knee, so even just this little point of articulation is going to make this front knee armor move, and then if you just move it all the way back like so, this is just going to slide right inside the armor, and you're gonna achieve a really nice bend. This back flap has a little posability. The ankle can move in and out with the piston moving inside right there. Also, the ankle is going to be on a peg joint right there, so this is just going to have some good posability in of itself. And the foot can go up about that much and also down pretty much all the way as if it was supposed to be a transformable suit. Now, for the backpack, you are going to have some mobility right here at the wing binders, so this can move back. Uh, this can also move back and forth and just rotate, as well as these can rotate all the way back like so, and it can go forward about that much. Next for the thrusters, you can move these pretty much all the way around. Uh, you can't really rotate them back and forth, but they do just go side to side, up and down. Now one thing that does suck with this kit is you are not going to be able to get too many dynamic poses on the ground with it unless you do a lot of reinforcement to these joints because they're going to be fairly loose and especially if it's going to be on a smooth surface, Posing this thing on the ground is fairly challenging and it's also gonna have that back heavy backpack. So yeah, you're gonna have to do a little bit of work to it. But on a stand, you just attach the stand adapter that comes with them right there. And you're gonna have a very beautifully posed Hyakushiki right there on your shelf. But it's gonna need a little something else. It's main weapon, the beam rifle. Yeah, that's all it's called, just called the beam rifle. Now it is gonna have some shields that it can actually use separately, but it's just pretty much going to be the Hyakushiki beam rifle with some extra little attachments and extensions. Uh, overall, it looks really good. And this is what it's gonna look like in its more base form. So you're only gonna have uh, three different colors here. You're gonna have the basic kind of gunmetal, the black as well as the white right up there. But yeah, looks really decent. And you just slap into the hand via this peg system, so the two pegs just interlocked with each other going into the hand. Now to make the shield, all you're gonna do is just rotate 
the pegs inward, like so. Plug them directly into this shield bit and plug it right on the back of the forearm. Now you're also gonna have two beam sabers right here on the back, uh, which just pop off. Plug it into the hand and pop on the effect part. And lastly, for the transformation of the beam rifle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug the shield bit right back onto the top, and then plug these flaps right here onto the side. Now for comparison, here he is next to the high-grade RX-78-2 Gundam, the Master Grade 2.0 Gundam, and the Master Grade 2.0 Hyakushiki. So with these builds, you're really going to get two different build experiences. Um, I remember back when I built the 2.0 Hyakushiki, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I loved every minute about it. But I would honestly say I had more fun building the Crash. Just It was a, it just felt different. It was a little bit bigger, so I was like, you know, it's cool. There's a lot more parts that are kind of like added to it. Uh, but some of the parts are just way bigger, and, and, you know, like the binders or the legs. There's going to be a lot of different things that's really going to separate both parts uh, from each other so I'm just gonna give my kind of like you know uh, recommendation over to the Hyakushiki crash well for my final thoughts on this kit um, I'm just gonna start with the pros uh, obviously this is just a beautiful kit like I mentioned throughout the review I love everything about it and I do think that if you just give it a little bit of extra work maybe even just a uh, dry brush of some silver on top of that black I think that's just gonna make it stand out even more. You really don't even need to go the full length to paint the entire kit. You know, just throw some silver dry brushing or maybe a little bit of like, you know, uh, chipping of silver and throw those water slides right on it. Man, you're gonna have a beautiful kit on yourself, guaranteed, especially if it's gonna be on the stand doing some dynamic poses. But there are some cons. Um, I would definitely say some of the parts just fall off super easily. So like the parts on the side of the legs right there, uh, the side skirts, the entire waist itself just falls apart uh, with just a light bit of handling. So maybe be a little careful. You might have to do a little bit of gluing if need be. But you know what? I still had a time, basically just a beautiful time building this kit. And I'm not, I'm not going to say it's rare for me to say, but... I don't say that about every single kit. Some kits are kind of more of a chore to build. Some I have a just a non-pleasing uh, experience overall. But this one, man, if you was here for my live streams, I, I was vocally expressing my love for this kit and for the entire build process. So if you can, guys, definitely try and pick this kit up. Um, I mean, you could definitely go to newtypehq.com. If they don't have it, um, I really don't know of too many other places outside of maybe like Hobby Link Japan, but uh, I would definitely try to go to newtypehq.com. That's where I picked this one up, and they should still have more. But that's it for me, guys. Definitely appreciate all of you for watching. And if you like this kit, let me let me know in the description down below what was your build experience like. And if you have not built this kit, tell me exactly you know when you want to try and get it, or you know why or why not you have not uh, picked it up. So. Um, other than that, that's all for me, guys. Definitely appreciate you for watching, and stay tuned for the next review. Bye-bye.